all of a sudden they say, hey, then you are used to work in Falters. I mean, there are lots of us. I mean, it was the uh, biggest employer anywhere around here, of course, in those days. That's what I did at Foxes. Hey, what well, did you do at Foxes? Uh, I worked on the umbrella desk. <laughs> Office boy, really. I mean, it was the first job after I'd left school. And, I mean, my parents expected me to get some kind of food. I thought I'd be 20, about 22, wouldn't it? I must remember, because my was a bit. How long have you got? Pardon? How long have you got? Uh, is it 22? It's nearly 22. Are you all oh, 22? Well, I thought it ought to come about 15 minutes, oh, and it's only just there, it's all right. So, come on, what do you think working on an umbrella desk in Bones? Um, umbrella? I don't know. Uh, the, I just used to take messages up to the uh, office, the umbrella office, you know. War. What year was that then? Pardon? What year was that? Was that before the war? Oh yeah, that, this was in when did you start there? 19, middle 30s. Yeah. So Callum, what do you think well, life was like in, yeah, in, the, in the office for social life? And what do you think social life was like? For, yeah, what did you have to do to survive, you know, in the war, what did you have to do? You know? well, not in the war, like, before the war. You're yeah, talking about before foxes. the war, what was it like, you know? Well, well I, I was saying earlier on, I can remember my mother, you, it, Tell how much money we had, the family. I mean, uh, I had a, a younger brother who worked and things at, at Fox's for years. And, and uh, a younger sister. And we all lived at home, but my, the oldest child, the sister, who's about 94 now, and she went to live with one of my dad's sisters in Manchester. Never brought up at home because couldn't afford to bring it all up. You know, what were wages like? Pardon? What were wages like? I think I, I, know, it was, I can't understand the thing, but it, it wasn't, I didn't think it was pounds a week. It might have been 25 bob a week, I think, maybe it was the first job. <laughs> I know it's a surprise, isn't it, how it was like, but, uh, but at least it was a job and you were taking something in. But I said earlier on, uh, because my dad was ill, uh, about the time I started to go to Penniston Grammar School, 1927, and uh, no money coming in at all. And uh, my mother used to go out cleaning, doing washing for people, and so I got, I'd, I'd have liked to have stayed on and maybe gone to university, but yeah, we all had to do a bit, and uh, that's why I got the first job I could. And I used to, she used to, used to be cheap at, for her to send me on a bus, just past the infirmary in Sheffield, to a butcher's to get meat, which was, and it was cheaper than buying it at the cooperative butcher's in Alterbridge. Didn't you go to Stocksbridge School? Pardon? Didn't you go to Stocksbridge School? Didn't I go to Just Stocksbridge School? No, no, I went to uh, Alterbridge School and then to Penniston. But uh, I knew quite a lot of people. There's, in fact, my daughter married... Uh, and uh, I, I went to school while I was uh, 14. Yeah, because you had to leave when you were 14. Yes, yeah. we had to leave when we were 14. And I was just 14 when I left school. And then I went to work with Samuel Foxes. Uh, so what did you do with Samuel Foxes? Were you working in office? Or? Yes, we were in office, yes. In office, just a little runabout in, in, in office. Yeah, I could do a lot of filing and, and that. Um, and so yes, we have a very enjoyable life. Just tell me this. So where did you go? Where did you go the parachute jump? Where? Yeah. Uh, Ibush store near Bree. And did it remind you, have you done it before? Did you do it in there? I've done one at, I need one at Greenlake and on the 73rd birthday. And, uh, but after Sunday, you couldn't do one on your own. So I had to have it done at the end. But it went in ordinary shoes. And it was like an old army shoe. Had you done it in the, in the war? Had you done it when you were in the army? Parachuting. I went in, Pat. Yeah. 
pays à jouer de temps maintenant. Donc, euh, it would have been better that way. Mm -hmm. The land is in the sand, so it's like, uh, but I've just been explaining that this tandem jump was a new shoe. The, uh, I went with a, a, a coal merchant when I was a lad, when I left school, and then uh, I had a driving test in 34, and uh, started driving lorries. Then you were driving? So uh, I was driving lorries till I went in the army. Then when I came out of the army, I never came oh, back here. So I went, I got a job in the power station, uh, where the towers are now. And just brought some, went to Bangladesh. Uh, electrical, electrical? Uh, power station, yeah. Then they pulled it down, eventually it were running out of time. And they were building bigger than more power uh, stations. So driving, I suppose, is kind of an isolated job, really. Just you and a mate, or just you on your own driving? Yeah. Sometimes I had a mate. If I, were, I used to fetch potatoes in, from uh, farms in Solmy and Lincoln and all around. And uh, I had a mate. I found a He'd be about 16 or 17 here on the road. So it was a good change when he got Did you feel like it was a, a, a change for the better joining the army, even though it was at the time of war? Joining, joining, did you feel it was a change for the better going into the services, even though it was a well, time of war? It made me a lot of good because I came out and got a better job. And I was all married. So, so when you came out, what happened on the... Can you tell us a little bit about at the end of the war? Uh, what do you want to know? Uh, Did you come back from having been in a prisoner of war camp? Because my grandfather yeah. came back and he was he was really really thin when he came back and yeah. and they went they wouldn't even let the grandmother come and see him. She had to wait till she finished work to come oh. and uh, sit out to him. Well, uh, when I came out, eventually. Uh, the, the Russians released those, and I came, I came back part of way with the Russians, and then the, the Americans sent an officer up to tell us, because we were in a camp with the Russians, and uh, the officer said, if you get to the autobahn, we're going to go to a certain point and pick up on the way back. So, Four of us went and uh, we got picked up on the order and three days later I was all on me. That was it. What oh, were the Russians like? They were all right, we always read. They were terrible to but then again, they were to be terrible to them. The guy that we were talking to in, uh, in Stocksbridge Library he said he was a pilot over Dresden. Yeah, I was here in Dresden. Yeah, yeah. I'm Leeds. I was in Dresden for a bee. So you were in Dresden when he got bombed? No, I, we could see him bombing. Oh. And, uh, I was at Mulberg, I don't know. That was a little village in, with a bee in the mm. And uh, we could see him bombing. He used to come at night. We go out in the English and Bond at the time and then they go out in the suburbs of country and then when they were coming back, back home, Yankees come out and come at night. Mm -hmm. But it was vice versa. So, yeah, they used to do that. But then they had them to make it. Yeah. 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 To put it all to conclusion, <laughs> yeah, go on. what's your best memories of Stocksbridge in, in the cyber community? Uh, I should say when steel, for me personally, I should say family atmosphere when steel works with, when it was at its height in what, from the 60s, and then come. So it's a 1975, it probably, it probably disintegrated a bit. Uh, but there were a lot stronger community spirit there. But yeah. at the same time, you'd have, you'd have, there were a lot of... It had a, 
kind of other side. Everybody knew each other's business, which you might yeah. you might not have. Yeah, mm. someone, someone said to us uh, today, didn't they, Adam, that um, you got the community was such well known, yeah. people yeah. knew yeah. each other yeah. so much yeah. that yeah. You'd, you'd if you did something bad, yeah. you'd then it yeah. would be for your life. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, you'd, uh, I mean, when you worked in, when you worked in, in works, you know, it's all on training, and when you got actually in works, first thing people asked you, who's, who's your father, mother and brother, um, and that seemed to be more important than, than, yeah. the, than the capability. Across them at school, don't you, running to teach a dog's tail? And you went to the. Uh, oh, Samuel Fox. Samuel Fox. Oh, this is a. He's supposed to work asleep when he's supposed to be working. And he says, he's going to be asleep when, when you are, I'm awake. When you are. When you are. Well, yeah, that's supposed to be true about Samuel Fox. I mean, this fellow, the call of the Sheldon. This bloke had nodded off, you know, it works. Oh, look, look, Mr. Fox, he's fell asleep. Look. He says, yeah. He says, so what? He says, he's more used to be asleep than you are. That's possibly too strong. I said that because while we were at school, I say all the men were away, and the, we used to get cards in October for leaving school for a half day to go stage picking. And the farmer used to have to sign that you'd done your work, and you used to get half a crown for the morning or half a crown for the afternoon, whichever one you did. Uh, uh, and there are all these kind of things come into it. Uh, shopping, we went to fetch my grandmother's ration. My grandmother lived close by, and I used to go and do her shopping. I used to go and fetch her rations. And it used to be one and three eight, which is all money for the sugar, tea, butter, lard, cheese, whatever. The, the amount she got for the week. One and three eight. Mind you, the pension was ten shillings a week, so nobody wouldn't get rich on that. And uh, she had a little radio, so I could go down there and listen to this radio. It was one that my uncle had built her. But even that, that was ten shilling life, and so it covered a week's, well, a week's pay, like to go, uh, what, to cover the ten shilling per year license. And then I say in 1944, the October holiday, the theatre picking holiday, I left school. And I went to one or two places, and uh, I'd, I'd wanted to, to work with wood, but there were no, they weren't taking any apprentices on because of the shortage of materials. Things were so short that even builders, where, where houses are being bombed and, and knocked down, not only houses, but big buildings which were important to the community, if they were damaged, they had to get a license before they could be built, and, and there were very, you know, very few licenses. And, uh, and so I, I went round one or two places that they'd only to accept you as a relative working there. And uh, I finished up, I, I tried in, in Sammy Fox's here at Stockbridge. And uh, I sort of got into the office of uh, Mr. Goodrum, who was the youth employment officer. And he set this lad off with me to try and find me somewhere around the, around the yard. Uh, a job. And I got on in the traffic department as locomotive cleaner. And uh, so I was working 8 o'clock till 5, Monday to Friday, and 8 till 12 on Saturday. And uh, they were driving time off. And they were, they were thoughtful at that time of work in, in regard to youth because they used to have what they call the day continuation school. And uh, you start up in the morning with the English and uh, one, or, one or two other things down in the yard over the room over the top of the ambulance room. They used to have this like a lecture room and we used to be in there in the morning. The last hour, 11 till 12, we'd be in the gymnasium and, uh, and then it was lunchtime and then we had to walk up to the high school. And there, when I got there, I met for the first time, I met X equals Y plus so and so. And I didn't know, I'd never seen these. I got to 14, I'd never seen this kind of uh, study before. And uh, so I, I, I got, so I, you know, passable. Very poor, I got through. 
and, and then there was metal work, making a poker or, or making a cigarette lighter out of a wood or something like that. We were doing them kind of things. And, uh, and then night school. The, the first year of night school, I didn't know it was, we were going to get on at Foxes, and I didn't know it was obligatory to go to night school. And so I signed on at Wisewood. And we were doing a little bit of woodwork at that Wisewood. I came out one night at about nine o'clock. And on we know towards it being snowing. So there were two or three inches of snow down. And all the horses had stopped. Up the, up the, up the hills, I right? might have been in town up the top of the hills. So I had to walk from Wisewood. I walked down to, to the bus stop at Walsley, where the horse and jockey public house is to get on the bus, and the no bus. So I had to walk up over Wallow and Wallow about four miles back to Ulterich, in pitch black, snowing. Ooh. Normally, you know, you've got to get on because you've got to get to work next morning. And that, that was the main thought, you know, you couldn't have time on. And so we went on that way. I got this job as a locomotive cleaner. There were some other characters I met there. They were, they were characters. I'm not saying there was anything wrong with them. They, they were, but this, this chapel, they put me to work with cleaning the local ships for a start, before I was tied on the locals. And he'd been an ex miner. Uh, Tom, Tom Marsh Crossley. And there he was, in his late 60s. He used to be sweeping up around the shed, cleaning the pits out where the locals had been standing over, washing their ash pans out and everything. And. Uh, when it came time for him to go, his pipe back and he used to sit down and I used to be there and he used to start telling me about the accidents he'd seen in the pit. People killed, men with the face of blown. Really exhilarating stuff for a 14 year old, you know. Oh. And, and of course there were all the other jobs then, up around the low course, what, uh, filling them with water, calling them up, and, and all this kind of thing. But it's not time, they used to send me for sandwiches and that to the canteen. And the favourite thing then in the morning was the bread and dripping. I mean they always, in the canteen, they always had these great lumps of meat, so they used to have marvellous dripping. And it used to be a penny a slice. And this young fellow used to send me, bear in mind there was no paper to wrap stuff. My hands had been around the lower court and everything were black. And he used to send me for seven slices of bread and dripping. When I got back, carrying them on my hand like that. He used to take the six slices, because they were okay. The bottom slice had got a dirty grip handprint underneath it, and I could either eat it or throw it to the bin, you know, because it was it was, it was dirty. But that, that's all. And then we had this chap who worked, he was chef from a foreman, uh, Oliver Barrettle. And he'd been in the First World War and been gassed by that. He'd been a local driver, but he, been badly gassed and it affected him so much. He started coughing and you'd never expect him recovering from that bout of coughing. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, the gas had got to his lungs and, and from the First World War. And there were one or two other fellows in, that had been in First World War. And they were rough men, they were hard men. They had to be hard to get through that time of turmoil in First World War. But, you know, they weren't nasty, they wouldn't swear if there were any ladies around or anything like that. No, they, they, were, they were hard. Then there were the uh, ex-policeman, he was 70, and I'm not joking, he was as hard as I am. And he had that bearing of a policeman at 70 years old. He had a nice moustache, and he used to have this waistcoat, and the buttons had all got photographs of famous racehorses. But he used to watch that little moustache because if he took a dislike to anything and that little moustache started bristling, everybody moved. The hardest man in the place moved because they knew what Herbert was like. The chap from the car always, whoa, me up fella, back forty, oh, he, and he, he called Herbert a very nasty name one day. Herbert Ford. Dropped him like a log and they had him in the office. You know, this is a steel work but not a, a boxing ball. What are you doing? And it were it were dealing uh, with all the traffic manager at that time. And uh, Herbert said, Mr. Illing, he called me a very nasty name. 
I said, if you had a form of that, you would have been on the floor, you know that. And so the manager said, on your way. You know, you were too good a man to lose, too good a shunt to lose. And it were, were great, you know. Uh, they, they, he, he would have been with the pension bobby in about eight, in the 1890s. Walks for the for the fishing. He got he got them as junior juniors could have them, you know. Yeah. And uh, they they had hooks. They'd make them hooks. Me and he used to breed maggots. They'd be in a big bowl. He had to breed them down in garden. And uh, he'd have a big bowl. And uh, our butcher family butcher, where Chadwick lives, where a family butcher shop up by me, I had an argument with her and I saw her. She said, where they lived in, was a big posh house. I said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Chadwick, it weren't. Oh, it was. She says, it weren't, it was family butchers. I says, my big used to go, so I like taking me around and stuff. She says, uh, I says, and there's some big ups at night. Oh, she says, she says, yes, they had stables with us. I says, they didn't. I said they used to pass the cows up to kill them. You know, in them days they killed their own people. Oh, no. There were no uh, taking them to, to uh, you know, things like that. And, and they used to put a collar around the neck and there was a big ring in. They're much of rings and were still there, back of that Mrs. Chadwick. I said, isn't that what family butchers shop? I mean, we oh, went... They knew them, pull them in and then... They, they, well, no, they the used to steal them, didn't they? Sometimes they had a gun here, but they had a big thing and they used to hit them in one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to... Lads used to go out back to watch, but we wouldn't go to that thing. Not that thing. And they used to kill pigs round here as well. Put them on a block of scraper. <laughs> oh, yeah, they used to love to... Everybody would kept pigs and they were killing one locally. All of them had to go around and read it to watch them. And they'd give them bladder out of pig, you know, and they'd go, oh, I know that's what I've done. Don't move for that, we used to play a league on us once. Keep can. <laughs>